Hello, everybody. I'm not actually sure which episode this is going to be because I made a pretty big mistake when I was originally creating the slime. So let me show you what I did wrong and what I'm doing now. So here is the first slime that I created, and it is uh, rigged up and animated just fine. Um, and it's pretty easy to animate and rig this sort of thing because it doesn't have very many complicated points so you know you can get it to move or whatever but in this particular set of animations I didn't make any root motion so you can see that the slime doesn't actually move even though this is supposed to be turning it ends up right back where it was and what you do is you apply the turning in the game world and that works for a lot of kinds of creatures because if you've got feet uh, a lot of players are willing to just kind of overlook any kind of sliding that you might do and you can balance it right but it doesn't really look very good in uh, flat creatures like this because it gives you like they, they kind of just slide across the ground like they were on rollerblades somehow it doesn't look very good at all uh, so what I did is I decided to go ahead and uh, figure out how to animate this thing using root motion so now I've got these root motion effects and you can see how this does not return to the place where it was when it turns right it really turns right. And similarly, if I were to go over here to um, forward, when it moves forward, it actually moves forward. And this is basically a good way for it to look realistic, because I can animate it to look realistic. And uh, it ends up working rather well, at least for the slime. But I have to recreate the um, the animation controller that we're going to use. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, not release the various slime videos I created. And instead, I'm going to just start here, which cuts about eight videos out of the queue. Well, well six, which is good. It's always good to skip a whole bunch of boring stuff. Um, if you don't know how to rig, that's the only thing I'm kind of not showing you now because uh, I'm kinda skipping the rig element because I've already got rigged but it's really pretty easy you can look up tutorials on that all day and all night and we'll like, we'll get a couple more monsters to rig in the near future I'm sure um, and I'm also not gonna show you how to animate but again we're gonna get a lot more creatures to have to animate in the near future so I'm pretty sure that you're not gonna be missing out on anything with that in mind here is the original slime which is not only rigged, but it's also set up to be fully animated and it has a little bit of intelligence to it and that sort of stuff. And we're going to have to go over how all of that stuff works uh, again because uh, we're going to be missing the episodes where I built that stuff. But over here is the new slime, which has root motion applied to it. Now, if I were to turn this slime back off because we don't need it, uh, this root motion affected slime, if I hit play, it does move forward like this. And that's because I've got the animator moving forward. Now the way I've got the animator set up is it actually ping-pongs between the same animation and I'm not sure that's necessary. Let's go ahead and try it with just one. Yeah, that's fine. That was just left over for me trying some stuff out. So, let me show you how to import those kinds of animations because this is a little bit tricky. When you click on the Blender file that you're importing from, you're going to get these three options, Model, Rig, and Animation. We're not actually doing a, um, uh, we're not actually doing a humanoid, so our, our rig is a generic type rig. And the key here is you actually have to specify the root node. And by root node, it actually means the root bone. Um, this is important because if you accidentally specify the amateur, the armature rather than the bone, it's not going to work and you're going to get confused. Uh, and what happens then is that all of the motion gets reset after every animation. So, you know, you move forward an inch and then you slide back. That doesn't work. Uh, here in the animations, when we import the animations, uh, I've already done it for forward, so I'm going to go ahead and try it. Uh, you do the loop, the time loop, and you don't bake anything because the idea is that baking actually makes it so that uh, that motion is part of the animation rather than part of the world. So you leave it unbaked and it works. Um, but you do want to loop it because, you know, that means it'll repeat itself. So here on turn right we can do the same thing. Just loop it. And then on turn left we can loop it. Oh, and on uh, new idle, we can loop it. 
This one we could bake, except for there's no reason the root bone doesn't move at all. Anyhow, all of that stuff is baked, but our animator doesn't have any of that stuff in it. it. All it's got is this move forward animation, so we are going to need to create something more interesting. Let's go ahead and create some blend trees. Blend trees are uh, a really powerful feature of, of Mechanim, and if you're not comfortable with them, I'm going to make you get comfortable with them, because they are the core of absolutely everything we're going to be doing with animations. So here in the blend tree, we've got a couple of options, uh, but none of these options matter to us at the moment. All we really want to do is dive into that particular blend tree, and you can see that it's empty. We're going to name this. This is going to be our turn tree. And we're going to put in uh, a motion field, another blend tree, and a motion field. All right? And down here in the, insp in the uh, file view, uh, project view, we have all of these animations underneath our file, and we're just going to drop them in. We're going to have this be turn left, and this is going to be turn right. We're going to go into this blend tree here, and this blend tree, oh great, thanks. Uh, and this blend tree here is going to be our motion tree. Um, call it the forward motion tree. And this is going to have two motion fields. One of these motion fields is going to be our idle animation, which is right here. And the other one is going to be our forward animation, which is right here. So what we've done is we've created uh, two of these blend trees. And the first tree is here, and then inside of that tree is a second tree. So what we're going to be doing is this is what gets played when the slime is just moving. So we check and we see what our turn value is. And if our turn value is low, we turn left. If our turn value is high, we turn right. And if our turn value is in the middle, we move straight. Um, and by move straight, I mean we play the straight animation. But the key here is that we can mix these. So we can turn a little bit left and go straight at the same time. Similarly, if we go down into here, if, we are, if our forward is at zero, then we are just idling. And if our forward is at one, then we are just moving forward. But if we play half and half, we'll get half of the idle animation and half of the forward animation and it should look quite nice. There is one little thing though. Uh, the defaults run it from 0 to 1, and that's not what we need in this case, because our turn actually runs from negative 1 to 1. 0 means we're not turning. So we have to turn off the automatic thresholds and make this negative 1, and make this 0. No, nope, I mean 0. Just 0. Thank you. So now that should work. But, of course, these forward and turn things aren't being set. We'll get to that in a minute. So if we look at this slime, you can see that it's playing the idle animation. Let me change the shading on the sun. It's really extremely aggressive. There, that'll do. So we can uh, go ahead and look at this slime. But more importantly, we can actually change these on the fly just to see what they look like. So um, if we were to trying to get so I can see it and edit these values at the same time. It's not easy. Oh, we can just look at the slime in game view, in a scene view. That'll be a little bit easier. Yeah. So go over to scene view. There we go. So here is our slime, and you can see it kind of looking around because it's idling. If we take this forward up to one, it now moves forward. And if we take it to point five, It'll kind of nudge forward while looking around. Neat. Take it to zero, and it stops moving forward. Over here in turn, if we take it to one, then the slime will turn 90 degrees every two seconds, or whatever length of time that is. Every one second, it looks like. If we make it 0.5, then the slime will look around while turning 45 degrees. Or, you know, not not quite 45 degrees because of the way that the root motion is applied. Um, we've got we've got a, a system where uh, the the primary amount of the motion is actually applied near the end of the animation. So uh, because we're blending it, well, never mind. The point is it doesn't blend together 50/50 uh, with the root motion. The root motion looks like it's coming in at about 30 percent, but that's okay. Now we can also go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we can have it move forward while looking around and turning right. Now it's turning left instead. While moving forward very, very slowly. Now you might be wondering, 
okay, well, how do we make that actually work? And that's actually really, really easy. Um, but the real difficult part is having it know where it wants to go and where it wants to look because uh, you have to have it understand uh, that it wants to track down the player. So I built a class called Mob AI, and I'm afraid I'm not going to rebuild it, but I will open it up and walk you through it. It's not as complicated as you might think, but it does have some leftovers. So I get to, while I'm going through it, change all of these leftover pieces so that they no longer apply to us. So first off, this leftover piece of walk speed and turn speed, we can get rid of those. Those are for providing our in uh, game motion and we now provide our in-game motion through the animation so just delete those down here in update we say if we're not attacking then we do all of these then we do all of this and that's still true uh, here we set the forward equal to one and this just says I'm gonna be walking forward and then we set this rigid body velocity well you know what we do not need a rigid body velocity excuse me uh, hiccups again and here we say, okay, who are we looking at? We're looking at the camera. We don't actually want to look up or down at the camera. We just want to look at the same height we are on at the camera. So we get the camera's X and Z position, and the Y position we set to the same as ours. Our delta is our distance between us and the camera. Now, that's, that has nothing to do with our heading. That's just our core distances. And then what we want to get is our current angle and the angle we're trying to turn to. So here you can see that our target angle is uh, equal to math math a tan two. Now what a tan two does is it takes uh, two arguments which are y and z, not x. Uh, sorry, which are y and x, not x and y. And of course by y and x I mean z and x. So that's extra confusing. Um, but a tan two takes two coordinates and it gives you the angle that they result in. And it and actually understands the nature of quads. So if you've done any of this math on your own in the past. Um, and had to try and figure out which quad you were in and try and figure out how many degrees to add to the degrees you get back. That's not necessary here. It does all the work for you. You just pass it in the Z and the X and it'll give you the correct angle. So here we say, well, what is the angle between us and the target? And it gives you the answer. And then we, here we say, well, what is our angle where we're actually facing? So we just use our forward direction and it gives us back the value. And we say, well, what's the angle between them? And then we have to do some math to make sure that we're not getting anything ag aggressively high. We want a value that's between negative pi and positive pi, right? And this will give us a value between negative pi and positive pi. So we know whether we want to turn left or turn right. If we didn't cap these, we might find that we wanted to turn left like 359 degrees and it would be terrible. Because it's between negative pi and positive pi, we have to remember that our animation, the, ro the turn uh, a value is actually between negative 1 and 1. So we divide this by negative pi and what we end up with is a value that's between negative 1 and 1, although we've swapped left and right, but that's that's because they were backwards. Never mind about that part. The point is that we end up with a value of negative 1 if we want to turn left and positive 1 if we want to turn right, but it's actually not going to be negative 1 and positive 1 because that would only happen if you were exactly 180 degrees off. Exactly pi radians off. So it's more likely to be something along the lines of 0.3 or 0.8. Uh, so for that, I created this animation weight system, which basically just drives this towards 1. So if you wanted to turn left or you wanted to turn right, this would radically alter that. But I don't need this anymore, so we're going to delete it. Uh, and I don't even need this anymore. All of this stuff is irrelevant because it, it, was, it was all like this magic bullshit I had to do to get the rigid body animations to work right and look good. We don't need it at all anymore. Instead we can just turn. So we can say if angle delta is greater than zero uh, then animator dot set float um, turn to one. Uh, negative one actually because we have to multiply it by negative one. And we say else if let's go ahead and make this there. Else, if angle delta is less than negative 0.1f, animator dot set float turn comma one. Else, animator set float zero. Now we're not going to get any um, nice smooth curves here, but we can put those in later. Uh, that is to say, our our slime is going to either be turning 100% right, or he's not going to be turning at all. We'll fix that later. 
Don't need any of this stuff anymore. All right, delete it all. Delete all this stuff. Don't need any of this stuff. Deleted. Don't need this stuff. It's all gone. All right. So what we've just said is we've said, okay, if we're not attacking, try and either move towards the player if he's in front of you or turn towards the player if he's not. Simple enough, right? Of course, the slime moves extremely slowly, just excruciatingly slowly. So this should be a pretty easy thing to evade, except, of course, we have to put uh, the mob AI object on the slime. Now, here is where things get a little bit tricky. If you're doing all of your math uh, on the slime itself, then you can do this thing where this is the Blender file, and we've got all of this other stuff floating around. But unfortunately, we can't do that if our root motion is being applied to this slime object, because if we put something above the slime, then the slime will wander out of it. So for example, I'll just show you. Uh, let's put the slime inside of a inside of a cube. So here's a cube, and let's put the slime inside of it. No, oh, I missed. First things first, let's put the cube at zero, zero. Uh, sorry, zero, zero relative to the slime. There we go. And uh, let's make the cube large enough that we can see it. Oh, I don't want the box collider. Oh, I guess we won't bother. It'll wander out regardless of the size of the cube. And then we put the slime inside the cube like this. Now when I hit play, the slime is going to look around a little bit. Oh wait, I forgot to put on, sorry. <sighs> It's not animated yet, so let's go into the slime and and the animator, and let's just start it with a forward of one, just so that we don't have to worry about that. There we are. So you can see that it leaves the box behind. So the slime's animations aren't being applied to the slime's parent object; they're being they're being applied to the slime itself, and uh, and therefore we can't really rely on the on the things above the slime. Everything's got to be below the slime. Now this is problematic just because of the way that Unity treats Blender files, but it's not that bad. We'll just live with it. Uh, so to do that, we're going to have to add in a, a script, which is a mob AI script like this. And it's going to automatically add in a rigid body because in the mob AI script I say it requires a rigid body. That's because I was using a rigid body. I'm not using a rigid body at the moment, but I think it's a good idea to have one. Uh, because we're going to want to do rigid body related stuff. Still, there's a lot of things that we don't want this rigid body to do, so we're just going to basically turn it off. Oh wait, I can just turn it to um, kinematic mode. That'll do. Because we don't want to sink through the floor or anything. We'll deal with the rigid body later. Oh, and I forgot to set the animator, so it's going to complain. Hold on. Grind, 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 grind. I know you're just going to complain, yeah. So in order to set the animator, the animator is now actually on the same object, which wasn't the case before. That's fine, though. So here, you can see that the slime is going is turning towards me, and now he's walking towards me. There was some flickering going on there, and that's because we we're setting our values really, really aggressively. And you can see how it's starting to freak out about turning left. Uh, and what we want to do is we actually want to make that a whole lot smoother and we can make it a whole lot smoother but I'm gonna actually go ahead I see it I'm gonna actually go ahead and leave that until next episode because this has already been a really long episode